I know you have a lot <laughs> of different positions? sitting positions for yourself. <sighs> um, I'm pretty basic, I feel like, in my in my sits. In my sits. In good boy, good sit. <laughs> All right, starting off Warm very strong. Warm yeah, we're starting off very strong. Okay, it's fine. Everything's cool. It's fine. We'll just, I'll let you have that one. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Matt. Hi. Welcome Emily. back to the podcast. Yeah, thank you for having me on. I'm very stoked to do this in person. I'm assuming we're I'm rolling. I'm so pumped. I'm assuming we're rolling now. Yeah, we can be rolling. Okay, sick. I love this. Um, <laughs> we love rolling. I love favorite I love, activity. Uh, you're one of my favorite activities in the sense of hanging out with you as a friend. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see how I caught myself there? <laughs> All right, we're off to a good start. Good, awesome. Good times, guys. Good times. Awesome. This um, is setting the tone for a great show. I, I already knew it was going to be a great show. I love yours is more wholesome than mine, but yeah. Cheers. See, cheers, cheers with the caffeine. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't that's, matter. This that's is cute. This is fa- fall vibes and, and chaos and vibes. And Hawaiian shaved ice vibes. Shout out Alani. Mm-hmm. We have a lot of their stuff in the house. Fantastic. Big fans. Have you seen the little the little baby ones? No, I haven't. Oh, they're really cute. I'll show you. They have like little, um, I think they're just eight ounce. So they're only a hundred milligrams of caffeine. Oh, I wow. Think. It's like a hundred, 150. That's nifty. Yeah. So if you just want to kind of like, it's like, it's like taking a five milligram instant release, you know, it's like, you're like, I'm not going fully. Well, you know, you know, you know, what, you, know <laughs> you know what I think is I would drink a full one of these and then that one would make me not feel as bad for drinking another one. Exactly. So it's like, I could have like one and a half. That's the strategy. Every single day. It's all about strategy. Well, they're clearly they're crushing it, so they know what they're doing. Exactly. Yeah, hundred um, percent. So, what's what's popping? What's poppin'? introduce yourself? I think everybody probably knows who you are, but if they don't, they should. Exactly. They should Sorry. know who I am. Exactly. Um, yeah, I'm Matt McLeod. Uh, let's see, Emily. How long have we known each other? It's, it's been... about two. It's a little over two years now. Going on two. Well, wait, hold on. I, well, I feel like we've known each other online. Yeah. For a different period. And yeah. Then, and then IRL, mm-hmm. we met. Friendsgiving. At Friendsgiving? Right? Or wasn't, or, no, it was the writing the workshop, workshop. The workshop. That's what it was. So like so, two years and two months. Yes. Of real life friendship. Yeah, 100%. What a ride it's been. I know, I know. How's that been two and a half? Like two? I think so. That math. I know. We ma- we'd be mathing. I know. We'd be mathing. I feel like that flew by. I know. It's, it's been quick, um, but I feel like every time we do hang out, I'll get, I'll get sappy very quickly. I, <laughs> I, I feel like every time we do hang out, I get to, I enjoy getting to know you better and also it really helps me i've talked with amanda bucci as well more so that i'm in austin texas and platonic women (sighs) friendships has been a big recurring theme in my life recently and so it's something i'm very much leaning into so every time we do get to hang out um yeah i appreciate you so much so yeah thanks for doing well we can just cut the show now i'm good (laughs) 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 words of affirmation (laughs) or cups Ah, yeah perfect okay you're doing great yeah 100 percent um but yeah honestly so i'm from kentucky uh i'm a registered dietitian online coach i'm also considering if i look at the camera or if i look at you do whatever feels natural i'm gonna do both (laughs) okay i'm made for camera so i'm just really leaning in super humble yeah for sure um (laughs) uh but yeah i've been a fitness coach dietitian for several years and that's how we initially met and Mm -hmm. then finally we had other mutual friends in the industry and so then we got to meet irl and i think that's whenever um shit really started popping. that's when our lives began i think so (laughs) i think that that is the that was the genesis of everything else um but no, ever since then, it's been, uh, it's, it's been really nice, and I've been enjoying being in Austin now where we do have a large, large community of our friends and then keeping that kind of as the home base. And Denver would definitely be the second place that I would. Denver's fantastic. Carter and I have been, been very much enjoying this change of pace and yeah. um, the, the weather, everything. Mm-hmm. Is, is it's, it, so it's your first time here? It's my second time. Okay. I've, I have visited um, Austin Current and his wife. Um, I think one other time and I really enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. It's just cause it's, it's definitely Austin adjacent. Yeah. So yeah. it's, it's Austin adjacent and you get like the city vibes, 100%. but a different way. And the, and the people, the people mm-hmm. are open. It's, uh, I really, I really like the, the weirdness to be mm-hmm. honest. I really, yeah. I'm a very open person. So I like the self-expression and mm-hmm. all that comes with it. But I feel like, uh, Denver is more mountainy and cabiny mm-hmm. more crunchy th- yeah 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 That's well, well crunchier more crunchy yeah more crunchy moving um, to austin mm-hmm. was your first time moving away from home right no i lived in new york oh that's right i know oh i, I forgot about i that. know okay. yeah so okay. it's that was uh yeah so i i was i was in kentucky for like 25 years of my life and then um i ended up moving to new york city in hell's kitchen 
during the pandemic. Fun times. Really crucial time to move. What was that like? I've actually never had a first person account because mm-hmm. I've never asked. Like I never asked John or Yogev or David. Like what it was actually like. I said it was like New York on training wheels. Oh no. Yeah, it's kind of. But but here's the thing is. New York on training wheels is still yeah. very different than Kentucky on steroids. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's 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 quite it's quite different than what I was used to growing up. Twenty thousand person town in Ashland, Kentucky, and then I went to the University of Kentucky in Lexington. Um, and it's about three hundred thirty thousand people, and then so moving from there to you know the biggest city, um, <laughs> it's the the New York City. Um, it was. It was, I had a lot of resistance. Mm-hmm. And so I moved there uh, for my girlfriend at the time. She was in law school and I'm an online coach. So I was able to move wherever I wanted. Um, but I kept asking myself, one of the things that I read during that time was just like, instead of asking why, ask why not. Mm. And for New York City, it was just like, I am online. I'm able to move about where I want. And if I wanted to move back to Kentucky, it's like, it's not going anywhere. Right. So... I ended up doing that and um, yeah, I was there for a little over a year and obviously it was weird with some places were restricted, some people, some places were open, some places weren't, but nonetheless, like the experience that I got as mm-hmm. far as meeting new people and as I said, I am an open person, but this was my first uh, exposure to all of those different types of mm-hmm. people and cultures and everything that New York has to offer. And so I was really enjoying that while I was kind of on edge simply because it was a new environment. Mm -hmm. Um, But that anxiety was more so in excitement as Mm. opposed to like being nervous or anything. It was more so just observing lots of things in the way Mm -hmm. of life and appreciating that. And very quickly I became romanticized. I was like, yeah, oh, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a New Yorker now. Oh, yeah. I'm a New Yorker now. That um, pipeline from like, ah, to, oh, my God, this is the best place on earth. It's like, oh, dude, I'm so Swift. I'm getting into fashion now. It's like yep. I'm super edgy. You know, it's like all the, I'm a, I feel, I felt like a New Yorker very, very quickly. Within, I love that. Within living there. Um, and then, yeah, and then so from New York, I went back to Kentucky for about a year. And then that's whenever I decided to mm-hmm. make the switch to go to Austin, I which is where it. I'm at now. It's been a little over a year. I love that. I yeah. think one of the most special things about New York, in my opinion, is if you let it, it brings out the best version of you. Yeah. Like the most self-expressed, the boldest, the there's like a grit to being mm-hmm. in New York that everybody has and you have to have to be there. And so like you're talking about like it bringing out like fashion and this and that, like it just encourages parts of you that you maybe hadn't explored or didn't know were there, but had been there all along to just have a chance to get the mic it it demands some type of growth mm-hmm. for it and and that could be in one avenue or lots of different avenues yeah um as far as like just living there and being able to live there in mm-hmm. general especially as a as a business owner and yeah. things and then um also navigating around the city and all these different things it just it brings out um it can bring out a lot of great things if mm-hmm. you allow it to and that's what i had to do was i did have some resistance of moving but whenever i mm-hmm. moved there and I accepted it, that's whenever I was able to really step into it because I was like, okay, I'm, I, I'm going to be living here for the foreseeable future. So mm-hmm. I might as well not be a little bitch about this <laughs> and like, you know, be like, oh no, I'm in a big city now. It's scary. Mm-hmm. Like it was, I was just like, I'm going to lean into this. I'm going to see what this has to offer. Cause obviously mm-hmm. it's one of the best places in the world. So it's like, I'm going to, I'm going to fully accept this. And that's whenever I started to change my mind as far as like, maybe I could live in an apartment. Like, yeah. cause, cause my girlfriend at the time was very gung ho about staying in New York yeah. for, for the long term. And I was like, okay, if I want to be with her, if I want mm-hmm. to make this work, it's like, I have to come around to that idea. Um, and so it just, it tests a lot of your yes. so-called like firm beliefs in, in mm-hmm. what you want out of life. Um, and I think that being open to that can cause so much growth yeah um and that's what's happened with i think moving to to austin as well yeah that was gonna be my next question yeah is where do you feel like even just the last year of being in austin has encouraged the most growth like what area of life of self where is that relationships without without question like without question relationships not only yeah again not only with uh, platonic friendships but romantic relationships as well we have Several friends who, it's just our friends take that very seriously. Yeah. Um, And I think, it's funny, we were talking about this the other day. Two 
outsiders, and I say this tr without trying to come off as like narcissistic or right. whatever, but it's like yeah. to outsiders and things, it can it can give off like culty kind of oh, vibes. Oh, very weird vibes. It can very weird vibes. It can, like. <laughs> it can, and, you know, depending on which Reddit thread you read. And, uh, <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. Um, no, but it can just... It can, to it, all the Redditors out there listening, hi, thanks for the downloads. <laughs> Appreciate you. Every time. Appreciate you. <laughs> yeah, I keep feeding the algorithm. Um, but, uh, but no, it's like it can come off as, as culty or whatever just because mm -hmm. we do take it seriously and mm -hmm. are intentional with it. And, of course, taking... It just like with all relationships, if you take it seriously and things, mm -hmm. things can get messy and things yeah. can get very complicated and um, require continual conversation mm -hmm. and continual um, just getting better at your own communication and dealing with your own stuff and mm -hmm. making sure that, um, yeah, you, you show up as the best version of yourself because this is something that I have noticed, especially so Amanda Bucci and I were talking about this as far as as far as friendships and the best types of friendships so the friendship like I have with, with Carter as well. Um, and then I feel like with you and then with Chris or anybody that is, that I'm getting very close with, it's like, I am a better person because you guys are my friend, mm -hmm. right? Because you mm -hmm. guys Thanks. bring Likewise. out, right. It's just mm -hmm. like you, you, there's, there's parts of you that just fit, that just mesh mm -hmm. together with, me and who I am as a person that like what I want out of a friend is to bring out the most me possible mm -hmm. and potentially a, a side of me that isn't available solely mm -hmm. by myself. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> it does make me a little bit sentimental. I know, um, it, it, but, it, but it's so special. And I think it, there's also too, like there's a level of seenness, like, a, oh, this person gets me and understands me. And then also within that seenness, there's a level of accountability of exactly. this person is going to hold me to the version of myself that they know me to want to be. And so I also can't hide. Yes. And so it's, I, I constantly have not only a support system, but like a system of checks and balances where I, I don't want anyone in my life. And I feel like, you know, this is the kind of friendship I have with you, mm -hmm. the relationship and friendship I have with Chris and like anybody that's in my close immediate circle. Like if I'm acting out of alignment with they, what they know to be my core values, they're going to let me know yeah. like in a loving way or also too. And I think coming back to your point about like friend groups like ours looking kind of culty is there's also like this implicit assumption that because there is so much outward expression of love and community and this is so awesome and this is so great that there's never hiccups, right. there's never conflict, there's never sticking points. But in reality, part of why friendships become so strong and there is so much love there is when you can go through hard things, conflicts, hiccups, snags, whatever it exactly. is and work through those together. 100%. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think can be that same level of standards and accountability can be lacking in other friend groups. And so it mm -hmm. just becomes more of this surface level. We're friends by proximity type yeah. thing. And we have interests or we've always been friends. Mm -hmm. So therefore it's like, we should just continue to do this right. Whenever you're not actually uh, either of you getting much out of that relationship. And here's the thing. It's like, I think that that's also perfectly okay to mm -hmm. recognize that and to also find out what it is that you need and seek that out. And um, I think I've just been very, very lucky to always have, cause even in Kentucky, like I had a tight knit group of friends mm -hmm. and then moving here to Austin, it's like, that's kind of the, the main thing that brought me there was I mm -hmm. came and visited Carter several times and he brought me into the group and we had all these fun events and I'm just like, Oh, this is available all the time. Yeah. And so I'm like, okay, cool. And uh, I was actually discussing this with, so Carter and Austin current, um, who were Carter and I are both here with and it, it's, it's just like Carter and Austin were the two people from the internet that reached mm -hmm. out to me first. And I think Austin was the first one and be like, cause he lived in Australia at the time. This was back in 2018 right. or something, yeah. 2017. He was like, Hey dude, do you want to like talk on the phone, like FaceTime, <laughs> like as a person, <laughs> as opposed to like a podcast or a friend, like what, like I'm, yeah, trust just human to human. I'm very, yeah, I'm very mm -hmm. down with podcasts and things, but he was just like, yeah, you know, you want to just like hang out over, yeah. over the phone. That's and I was so like, funny. I would love to, I would love to do that. And so I, I did that with him. And then Carter kind of did the same thing, except mm -hmm. where he lived in Columbus, I was able to go visit him. And I was like, okay, both of these dudes are really awesome and I want them to be my friend. Mm -hmm. And so I just was intentional with yeah. my efforts and with, 
um, you know, following up mm -hmm. and actually making plans and things of just like, instead of just being like, oh, you know, we should do that eventually, mm -hmm. right? It's like, no, no, no. It's like, yeah. let's actually put this in the calendar and, and let's make this happen because this clearly now in hindsight it's like this is this is absolutely worth it and so 100 i think that's why i'm glad you guys are here too because we can mm -hmm. we can knock all of this out oh it's can, so great being yeah. in a place where people actually want to come visit versus yeah. like living in fucking ohio where people are like oh i'll come <laughs> just for my people but it's like nice to have like a place where people want to be 100%. Um, but something that you're alluding to and you're talking about like developing your relationships with carter and austin mm -hmm. is what i refer to of like the courtship of friendship, like dating friends. Yeah. And I think that's something that adults have a very hard time with. It, we, we appropriate romantic relationships and friendships very differently in our minds with how we develop them. When in reality, it's, it's kind of similar, but I think people have a harder time leaning into the kind of quote unquote talking stage of friendship because people ask me all the time and I'm sure they do too well like you have this amazing friend group like how do you make friends mm -hmm. as an adult mm -hmm. and so what is your advice on just kind of diving deeper into that like being intentional about and fostering platonic relationships whether it's male female just the whole thing and making those meaningful connections it's putting in the work mm -hmm. like it's like it's really it's really being supportive mm -hmm. and actually caring mm -hmm. and I think that that's why it has to come from a from a true place and now of course we had the we had the serendipity or luck or whatever you want to call it of being mm -hmm. online together yeah and so we were able to to really have that marinate over time and get to get to know each other that way but yeah as far as meeting people in person I think like that's honestly something I don't have the best advice for but from what I've seen with other people it's like actually going to certain events or talking to people even in the gym mm -hmm. like I, I think that that can of course don't be a dick about it. Don't yeah. be annoying. <laughs> um, like when it's appropriate, you can, if you see somebody constantly and it's like, that's a value that you want mm -hmm. mutual in your friends. Um, that's cool. Going to events, going to pickleball games is very popular. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's just getting into environments that you would also like to, like if you're into gaming or something, going to like mm -hmm. an arcade bar or something. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Well, that's um, exactly what I suggest to people is like, think of where the type of person you would want to be friends with hangs out yeah. or, you know, spends their time. Go to those things. Like, and, and I know it, it can be really challenging, especially depending on where in the world or where in the U.S. you live. Like, as much as we would like every place to have a lot of open, expressive, like, cool people that are down for like the deep conversations and this that like all the things we're looking in friendship not everywhere just like geographically is that way yeah. so sometimes doing stuff like retreats or seminars oh. or whatever and things that you're interested in that's actually where you make the best friendships it can be hard because then those friendships become virtual mm -hmm. but then it's also really cool because you get to do stuff like this where it's like you plan trips or you plan you know friendsgivings yeah. or whatever and everybody yeah. gets to come together yes you have to elevate your shit like you have to <laughs> you gotta like, step the fuck so, up well sometimes like paying for friends can work like you can absolutely <laughs> like paying john you know john romanello was my he was my mentor yeah. and like lots of these people amanda as well as far as where she where they were whenever I first met them mm -hmm. as far as more mentor and like kind of fanboy which is hilarious mm -hmm. now that we're very close friends mm -hmm. um it's just like you have to put yourself in those situations and you have to even reaching out to people online mm -hmm. um I believe uh uh yeah a couple of our friends in Austin they they talked about how they reached out to somebody from a location they saw that they mm -hmm. were at the spot or something and mm -hmm. it's like I don't know of course use your best judgment but like i think don't be afraid to reach out on yeah. social media don't be afraid to to dm somebody or something like that mm -hmm. and i think you'd be surprised it's like what's what's the worst that's going to happen you're right. already not friends with this person exactly. so it's like they it's it, you're not weird about it it's the potential yeah there's very little downside with very a lot a, a very lot <laughs> very a lot a many, whole, lots. <laughs> a, a, a many lots potential <laughs> for upside so it's yeah. like give it a give it give it a try right yeah just don't be creepy no. don't be weird be respectful i also think there is something to be said and you might agree disagree and i think it's mm -hmm. probably dependent on the person and their like level of introversion extroversion all that stuff mm -hmm. um but just like if you're like talking to someone like dating wise online you're not gonna go like balls to the wall like don't love bomb them exactly yeah yeah and like i know i get somewhat uncomfortable when someone i've never had a singular interaction with before is like hey we should hang out yes like for sure because i'm like 
Totally. I don't know you at all. Like, you, uh, you have to court them. Yes. You have to court them. It's a process. You have to court them. Like, if you, you end up following them and then, like, they put something on their story or something, mm-hmm. it, again, the, even just as a friend, you can, yeah. you can be like, oh, you know, what dish did you get there? I've been wanting to go there. I've tried mm-hmm. this. Or my friend has said something about that. And just, just over time, I think... Uh, again, put, that's why I say putting in the work is because the, mm-hmm. the some of the relationships with, with us has taken time and then, you know, sharing posts with each other and mm-hmm. being like, oh, this is awesome. And then reaching out and saying, hey, I've, you know, that was really well written or something. Mm-hmm. Or if you are in around that location, it's like asking. Uh, and I think the yeah. retreats, retreats can be really good, too. But it's like it's something that's so important it's mm-hmm. it's worth the the time and it's worth the rejection and Absolutely. it's worth whatever it's just like if you, you it, rela- romantic relationships are obviously very important but i'm finding out like you said having uh i think amanda and i called it like marriage friendships like yes, you're, you're, you're basically I love that. you're basically marrying the other like I your friends that. and it's such a fulfilling it's so different for me especially like mm-hmm. i said with women yeah um and i think that this is something that I want I want to talk about more for mm-hmm. men especially, which is I love yeah. Chris always has great messages for other men, kind of empowering mm-hmm. other men to to take that seriously and step outside your bros. Mm-hmm. Um and like really yeah. put the time in because it's such a different dynamic than mm-hmm. having a, a male friendship and it's mm-hmm. like of course you need different worldviews mm-hmm. and different brains than other mm-hmm. males. Um, and, and so it's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's just something that I think needs to be talked about more. And so, 100%. so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep doing that because of yeah. how important it is to me and how much I've, how much it's impacted my own life. So. Absolutely. And I yeah. think even from like a romantic relationship context, people mistakenly, think their partner is responsible for everything in their life, every aspect of their life to be their best everything. When in reality, like you need friends, your partner cannot be everything for you and they shouldn't be everything for you. So by having a strong group of friends, same gender, opposite Mm -hmm. gender, whatever it is, that actively helps your romantic relationships because you just have a more well-rounded support system. And I think, you know, Chris was the first person I ever dated that has had such close female friendships. And it was actually one of the greenest flags for me when I met him. And it's funny because I think a lot of people might think that's backwards of like, oh, like, aren't you worried? This, that, the other thing. And I'm like, no, it actually shows me that he loves and respects women. Yes. 100%. And and as a a woman. It's pretty important. Big green flag. And also it shows too, like that when I am going through something that is maybe, you know, more character, characteristically female that he might have a deeper understanding of it because of the relationships that he's already had. Yeah. So I would, and, and like, same thing for me, like having a lot of strong male friendships has prepared me for this relationship. And it's just added more texture and richness to my life because you'll never have a window into the female experience and I'll never have a window into the male experience in terms of actually living it. Mm -hmm. But by having people close to me that have that experience, I can have better empathy. I can understand you better. I can understand men as a whole better. And again, just be like a more well-rounded person. It it raises both of your standards, especially if you're in with our friend group. It's like, if you're a, a guy coming from the outside mm-hmm. into our group, it's like we are going to – you are going to be demanded the best of yourself. Yeah. From as – because we just are who we are. And, again, I know that this can sound <laughs> narcissistic or whatever, but we're pretty fucking awesome. Sucks to be great. It's like know? we're super great. Um, <laughs> we but just keep winning. It's, we, we do. The tattoo <laughs> says it right here. With the friendship tattoo. We just keep winning. But it, it's 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 – that is the stand. That's the only standard that's acceptable. Yeah, that is. Yeah. That's that's true. And so it raises everybody. Like mm-hmm. it, it is to use the, the Austin term. It raises the consciousness of the entire <laughs> of, of, of the entire <laughs> of the entire friend group. Right. Yeah. It's like it. We're all you know nodes in this entire web. And like for us to have this very strong foundation and to continue to build on that, it's like those mm-hmm. standards have to be upheld. And yeah. And so whenever you it's like my friend group is the last there's different filters whenever i have a romantic partnership Mm -hmm. and it's like yeah coming into the friend group and meeting people right it's like that's that's like it goes it goes basically like friendship and then friends and then it'd be like my family yeah right see honestly like my family's pretty chill like so i've never been like they've obviously been around for like every relationship that i've gone through and like 
whatever. So I, I'm almost like, I have almost been less nervous about, mm. you know, partners meeting my family, but like, because the friend group and also too, like when you get to this age, you know, mid late twenties and your thirties mm-hmm. and your forties, your friends are your family. And yeah. especially depending on the kind of family environment you had growing up, if you're not close with your family, that's even tighter. Like that's even bigger. So it's like when you have a, a friend group that means as much to you as blood bonds do introducing a new person to them, you're like, you better be real fucking cool. Don't let me down. I know. Don't I'm, let me down. I, I, like <laughs> honestly, honestly, like that's that's kind. Of, and I'm even I'm even very close with my family. Mm-hmm. But as far as yeah, what you said about them, the, your your friends being family, it's like there's so many things that mm-hmm. I have talked about with my close friends that I haven't necessarily talked about with with my immediate family. But yeah, it is. It's just like. You're, if this is this is the friend group, I'm gonna I'm gonna trust you to to be in this environment with them, and mm-hmm. and I'm gonna see how you you mingle um, with everyone, and and uh, usually, of course, if you've gotten to that point, we're pretty yeah we're pretty dead set on things, but but yeah no it's 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 something important that I think everyone should for should strive for because mm-hmm. it's, it's also like as I'm thinking about a romantic partner. I'm thinking of my round table of friends. And yes. again, if you have a round table of both men and women, mm-hmm. right? It's kind of like, how does this, how does, you know, Emily Duncan's personality mesh mm-hmm. with this person? Amanda Bucci, you know, Amber Tacey, all these different people. It's like, how, how would mm-hmm. they in- mesh and intermingle with, with this person? And it's not like a sense of, uh, you know, them making the cut or something, but right. it's more so like, I love the qualities that all these women mm-hmm. bring to the table mm-hmm. within my life. And so you getting along with these women is probably a pretty big green flag. Really important. Yeah. Or if you don't get along with them, then there's yeah. also something here. It's like, I can see them so much and they mm-hmm. can see me so much. It's like, sure. Maybe not everybody's personalities are going to mesh perfectly, but mm-hmm. for the most part, it's like, I need some, I need some congruence. Right. Exactly. Everybody. Exactly. Because if there's not, if there's a lot of dissonance and just, it's, mm-hmm. it adds a, a new level of very frustrating complexity to your life because mm-hmm. you're like, well, now I kind of have to separate these friendships that mean a lot to me in this romantic relationship. Or if I bring them together, it's not going to be the same energy. It's right. going to be very different. Mm-hmm. And also it's it's never from a judgmental way of like, Oh, I think my friends are going to judge this person. It's like you said, I know these people see me so much and they love me so much that they're going to let me know if someone is not the standard of person that I deserve. Yeah. You can't, it's like, you can't make any concessions for anything. It can't just be like, Oh, well like she's super hot as a great ass or he makes a lot of money or Uh this, that the other thing happens. It's like, no, this person just energetically. Yeah has got to be a good fit. And like, I can't hide from that. 100. And, and also it's like, it's a good tell of the person's securities or insecurities Mm -hmm. because it's like, if I bring my girl around you guys, like Mm -hmm. you are beautiful, you're successful. You you have all these, we have a hot friend group. Right. We got a hot friend group. Crushing it. We're just doing great. Sorry guys. (laughs) You're not invited. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) Um, you can, if you want just reach out to us. Um, (laughs) but maybe, um, (laughs) <laughs> but but no seriously it's like you you have all these these people around and so it's just like how how do they navigate mm-hmm. within this and mm-hmm. and understanding it's like no mm-hmm. we actually are platonic friends this yes. is this this mm-hmm. can exist yeah people say that it can exist I feel bad for them yeah um, well yeah. actually I would love to like pause and double click on that because that's one thing that I'm sure we've all dealt with the fears around at some point and then you know people like you and I we've arrived at a place where like oh no this actually very much so is a thing. For people out there that question that, that don't believe that that can be a thing, that don't know what that looks like, what advice or perspective would you have for them on how you have navigated that in your life and what that looks like for you? I think it's, um, to be honest, I think it is, it's, it is clarity within having conversations and mm-hmm. things like, cause if you, you are attracted to somebody or, or whatever, it's like, I think that those conversations can, can mm-hmm. come up. And, um, I, I really think the communication is key. 100%. It's like, it, and for me, it can be compartmentalization. I'm just like, if then I just, I just, it's not the fact that I'm like salivating over any pretty girl that comes in front of me or anything, but it's got more, that dog in it's, 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 it's <laughs> He do, he do, um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but it's like, yeah, no, I, I think, I think like communicating, I, I'm just, I'm just, I, I, I am just such an open and honest, like upfront mm-hmm. person. You are. I'm just like, you Hey, literally lay it all out there. I, I have to, yeah. because that is that 
we're thinking it and mm-hmm. I don't care to feel awkward or I mm-hmm. don't care to lay it out on the table whenever I know that once we get past this, then it's going to be, we're going to, we're going to be able to smooth this out. Mm-hmm. And so I understand that that might not be everyone's personality, but I do think part of it is getting secure with yourself. Yeah. That's huge. I don't know. Yeah. Go to therapy. Yeah. Um, go to like, do these things to do these things to, to feel very secure within yourself and then also the the communication side of things mm-hmm. it's like if you do if you if you think there's something there i mm-hmm. think there's a way of being respectful and considerate and how you you bring that up um and and getting that clarification mm-hmm. or um yeah i know i i think i think like i do think that's probably the biggest thing is working on mm-hmm. yourself and then and then working on that communication just being open because it's like maybe they probably thought about it too or like if Mm -hmm. they're not into you they think that you're into them Mm -hmm. and then so you've got to be like it's better to just get it on the table and be like yo let's just and then when it comes to like actually being in a relationship like let's say Mm. you bring a partner into something and they're like wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute you mean all of these girls right all these girls a lot of that comes back to the communication with your relationship and then the trust within your relationship and like there does come a certain point where like as a partner you just got to be like, I trust what you tell me. Yes. Like, and, and, and I understand also that the, the way that I just said everything as far as I, I do feel like I'm a very secure and open person. So as are, far yeah. as trusting, I definitely give people the benefit of doubt and all mm-hmm. these things, but I understand that not everyone's past is the same in mind. So if mm-hmm. I brought a partner in that can have these assumptions mm-hmm. and she's thinking these things, mm-hmm. it's like, I'm very cool with having that conversation mm-hmm. and providing that support and reassurance with them mm-hmm. as you guys work through that yeah. together. But like, you cannot assume malevolence yeah. immediately. Like, That's a terrible thing to do. For If, if exactly. you are assuming ill intent from your partner, you got to ask, why am I here? Exactly. Exactly. Or and if it's like something within me that just assumes ill intent because of my past, my history or whatever, like having the discernment to know, exactly. is it actually that I don't trust them or I don't trust my past experiences and that's now being projected onto mm-hmm. them? 100%. And I think with like what you said, as far as I just have to trust them, it's like, I think, yeah, get, get the work done within your partner where that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And then I'm the same way. It's like mm-hmm. you either have my trust or you do not have my trust mm-hmm. because I do not have time for everything else in between and yeah. the games and then like yeah. trying to figure out how you're feeling or mm-hmm. whatever. It's just like, because here's the thing is like, if I, if I ke- if I prevent you from cheating tonight, it's like there's, you're, you're going to cheat at some point. It's like, mm-hmm. I'm not, if, if that's in your mind, if that's something that you're going to do, you know, mm-hmm. me locking you down or, or having these very hardcore, mm-hmm. um, you know, or like going through your phone. Exactly. Or like like evasions like, of privacy and very hardcore like restrictions on mm-hmm. each other. It's like, okay, this is something, something else is, is going on here. And yeah. that's definitely what you need to unpack first as yeah. opposed to, it's like, it's not the friends. It's like, we need to, we mm-hmm. need to figure out where this is here, but yeah, mm-hmm. it takes, it's not only doing the work within your friend group, but it's mm-hmm. also doing the work within yourself. I think that's actually also a large part of why our friend group works is mm-hmm. because it's a lot of people that turn the lens in and have done so for a very long time and are not perfect, but are willing to self-evaluate and self-audit very, very regularly. Yeah. And nothing's better than whenever you do meet someone. So you mm-hmm. meet Chris or you meet mm-hmm. someone amazing and you're like, oh shit, this just fits. Mm -hmm. It just fits. It fits like a puzzle piece. It's like, Mm -hmm. this is very, um, this is, this feels effortless. If I feel Mm -hmm. very myself with this person, again, Mm -hmm. this person makes me feel the most myself possible. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's like, that's whenever it's fun to be within your friends. You're talking like, Oh, I met this person. Mm -hmm. They get to meet them. They're like, they're Mm -hmm. they're great. It's like, Oh, you did the work. You both did the work. Mm -hmm. And so now you're here. And so now it feels Mm -hmm. more smooth and more effortless, Mm -hmm. but it's like, you had to get to that point and you have to go through that shit. And of course, again, it's always dynamic. It's always a continual process, but it's like, it's, it's one of the most fulfilling things. And like you just, you, you, it would be a worthwhile thing to mm-hmm. put your it's pretty, time and effort. Pretty decent idea to work you on yourself. Sh- you There's should a, do it. For, would for, recommend for all the ten out of ten. Would recommend. Where would you suggest, especially on the male side, mm-hmm. someone start? And maybe it's the same for men, women. But your suggestions, because especially two men go through different things than women do. Um, for someone that's interested in starting to do the work on themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think that. I do think that noticing your triggers and things or like where you get jealous or where mm-hmm. things can really start to spike some emotion. I think turning that mirror back onto yourself and try, and of course it's very difficult to do, but mm-hmm. gaining some, some self-awareness around that. I mean, my, one of my biggest things has been 
uh, well, one, have amazing parents and amazing childhood. Um, <laughs> we love that for you. To be 100% honest, like it's, it's very important to be, be loved. Um, but no way. I know, you don't I know, say right? That makes a big it's, difference, it's, huh? It does matter. <laughs> but then I think um, I, I do a lot of mindfulness type stuff. So mm -hmm. learning about emotions, learning about mindfulness, mm -hmm. meditating, all these different, because that kind of amplifies your self-awareness, which yeah. I feel like is then the root of, of solving so many of these other things, or maybe not solving them, but even more so understanding them or right. why you act certain ways. You can understand the incentives and motivations behind it. And so whenever you understand that, then you can start to take the appropriate steps to, mm -hmm. to, to try and, and make positive changes around that. And so, mm -hmm. so yeah, I think, I think meditation is huge. Um, I think spending, spending time alone, mm -hmm. I think can be very big making sure. And that's the thing is like, if you can't spend time alone, if you always mm -hmm. need somebody there, if you always need someone else in the room, it's like, that's where there's something that you don't want to sit with. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of like leaning into that. Mm -hmm. Um, I think having, um, like Carter and I can have very good conversations as far mm -hmm. as creating a um, safe space, creating like a container that mm -hmm. is um, uh, like, hey, there's no judgment here. Mm -hmm. I we're on the same team. Mm -hmm. I love you. We're we're let's talk through this problem that has risen. And um, I now, as we keep hanging out, it's kind of a compounding effect where mm -hmm. he understands my brain and I understand mm -hmm. his brain. And luckily they are very similar, <laughs> which is hilarious. Um, you guys are very cute. Yeah. It's adorable. Our, he's my platonic life partner. <laughs> and, um, and we're also in a polyamorous friendship with James Manley. We love well. that. We, we love that a, so we're, much. We're a thruple. Um, very cute. But uh, it, it's, it's the best. Uh, but no, having somebody who can can go back and forth with you and mm -hmm. especially him and I both love playing devil's advocate with each other. Yeah. So it's finding it's, but it's, it's again, it's for the best of that other person. Right. And so it's like, it doesn't, it's not a judgy thing. It's not like a, he gets defensive. Mm -hmm. We're on the same playing field and he, him and I both know these questions are coming from a place of like, Hey, I know you. I'm just making sure you mm -hmm. aren't bullshitting yourself. It's like mm -hmm. I can even I can even agree with him. And I'm like, right. "Well, what about this? Like, have you thought about it from this angle?" And he's like, "Yeah, I've thought about that. This 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 and this." And I'm like, "Cool. I just wanted to make sure that right. you considered that." Accountability checks and balances. It's, like it's it and it's this is like weekly. This yeah. is the, mul honestly a couple times a week and we'll we'll mm -hmm. talk through things, but having and this could be a romantic partner as well, but mm -hmm. having, but it's also difficult if you're wanting to talk about your romantic, like mm -hmm. the problem is within the, the romantic mm -hmm. relationship. So that's where the platonic mm -hmm. friendships can be, be very important. And so it's like, if I did have a, uh, a prob a romantic problem and then I wanted maybe your perspective mm -hmm. on it, or I wanted a woman's perspective on it. And I wanted Chris and Carter's perspective on it too. It's mm -hmm. like those resources available are very helpful, but having, finding somebody that you trust and mm -hmm. finding somebody that you know loves you genuinely and that wants the best for you um i think that is huge and honestly a lot of these people listening might have to be the first ones to initiate that's such a good point you have to you have such to take action point. you have yeah. to you have to initiate those conversations and it's gonna feel it might feel a little bit especially for guys especially for yes. bros mm -hmm. right it's like you know you you it's just like you have that feeling it's like oh you know, now we're about to get vulnerable mm -hmm. with each other, but I promise you it's, it feels so good whenever you actually get there to that place with somebody and mm -hmm. you can, you can, you can talk through those things and you actually discover realizations that you've never had before. Yeah. Um, and it just, it's a, it's a really good feeling. So yeah, I think it's a combination of doing, doing that inner work and then also finding somebody that you trust and that you love and that wants the best for each other. And being intentional about that and mm -hmm. again making plans and and really following through with each other i think that's mm -hmm. huge it's it's very holistic like the mm -hmm. the nurturing of self and the nurturing of relationships require like a very holistic approach because even if we go back to like nurturing relationships thing it's it's showing up in all forms it's like showing up when somebody's in the shit it's cheering them on when they're winning mm -hmm. it's like the light-hearted fun where we're just like woo dance party mm -hmm. every time like it's all of it like mm -hmm. having a full spectrum existence yes. with people yeah 100 percent. no i agree um and so yeah i think i think people should do more of that i think i think th it's it's just i don't know people talk about relationships being important to them and mm -hmm. it's like carter and i joke it's like you guys are pretend friends you guys mm -hmm. you guys say you're friends but you're not actually friends mm -hmm. and again i understand that 
people can be in different situations and it mm-hmm. can be hard. Like they just, they don't have people or they're going, they're just trying to fucking make rent or something. Yeah, and so they're right. like, I don't know how I can put something else on my plate right now. Mm-hmm. But I think that it's, it's the same thing with coaching, right? It's mm-hmm. like people are going, they're like, oh, I'm going through this really busy period. And I'm like, this is when you need me the most. Right. You know what 100%. I'm saying? Like, like I can help me you support mo- you. <laughs> this is under my job. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then when it's your friend, it's like, this is under my job. Like, yeah, exactly. That's what I'm here for. I know. And so it's like, so I think making being intentional about that you can feel like it's something that you're adding to your plate Mm -hmm. and whenever it's actually something that it might feel uncomfortable but Mm -hmm. after you do it then you'll understand the ripple effect that it can have Mm -hmm. on everything else and and raise everything else up all these other cups in your life up as well Mm -hmm. um so so yeah it's it's important that's a really important perspective too because i think especially when we are in those very just kind of frazzled, stressed out places in life when there's a lot going on. Maybe you just lost your job. Maybe you're moving. Maybe it's this. Maybe it's that. Whatever it is. Maybe it's like broad sweeping gesture at the nature of the world. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, it's an interesting time to be alive. <laughs> right. It but is. like we we think, and sometimes it is very true that like we need to subtract things from our lives in order to help ourselves, in order to decrease stress. But sometimes it's the addition of a coffee date with one of your best friends or like a weekend getaway with your people at like an Airbnb, whatever it is, like the addition is actually what helps you kind of decompress or move through the thing that you're moving through. So it's not always a subtraction game. Yeah. Adding isn't always taxing. 100%. And it can be, it can be a pattern shift. It's like sometimes, sometimes the best thing you can do for your mental health is to uh, call work off at noon and have wine with your best friend. Just go fuck off. Like like really honestly and truly it's, it's breaking that, that pattern shift. And now of course, there is the, the the checks and balances within yourself, and this is where my term responsible delinquency mm-hmm. is. Being a responsible delinquent it. is a legit – it's it's kind of like a cheeky thing mm-hmm. that I, I called myself, but then I was like, no, this is actually the philosophy that I, mm-hmm. I live. You really do embody it. I really 100%. do. I really – thank you. But I, <laughs> I really do as far as like mo- finding balance and, and moderation and, and leaning into that. Um, it's, 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 it's very important. It's on, it's having one foot in order and having one foot on chaos and, mm-hmm. and having, because having too much order is going to keep your life, um, very s- sterile. It's, it's going to be very, yeah, it's going to be sterile. It's going to be stale. It's going to be very, um, slow and just not growth forward. Mm-hmm. Um, and then having, if you're too much in chaos, obviously it can be overwhelming, mm-hmm. have lots of anxiety and just not, you can be kind of crippled by mm-hmm. that much chaos, but having one foot in each is, is the, the epitome of responsible delinquency. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that that is the, uh, that's the middle ground that, that we're trying to find. So I love it. This is actually a somewhat decent segue into cool. one of the things that I actually really wanted to ask you about today. Cause I was sitting, I was thinking like, what do I want to talk to Matt about? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was like, I know the conversational flow where it needs to go, but there is one thing that I want to talk to you about because it is something that one shows the level of clarity you have on your own self, your own path, all of these things, but also how devoted you are to that and how not shiny object syndrome you have in the space that we're in. And that comes down to business. So I think it's really popular, you know, right now, the rhetoric of, hey, build and scale a team. And like, that's something that, you know, I've done and I've had my back and forth with it. But like, that's like the, what people deem as the epitome of entrepreneurship right now and what you are supposed to aspire to. And you, on the other hand, you've always been very like, I'm a solopreneur. That's what I want to do. I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. Great for you. Love that for you. Not for me. Correct. How did you develop that clarity and how have you stuck with that in, have you ever like felt pulled towards like, am I doing the right thing? Just kind of talk about that. Yeah. Um, it's, def- <laughs> it's definitely, I had that mentality early on as in like, even in college, whenever I decided to start my own business, it's like, I, I got evidence that I got evidence that my, um, choices that backed what I truly wanted to do paid off. Mm. Right. So it's like I, I, I was like, OK, this is kind of how I imagine my day to day in the future here is. And I actually I really benefit from seeing people who have similar lives or at least they've curated their life in a way that I want to embody or at mm. least certain pieces of their life. Right. Mm-hmm. And so. Mike Vacanti and Jordan Syatt were both two fitness coaches back in the day that I, I saw them and I was just, I, I saw the lives that they were living and they were doing their own thing and they didn't have any employees and they were making a decent amount of money and they were helping a lot of people and they were 
very similar to my backgrounds. And I was like, mm-hmm. okay, so this is what's available for, so mm-hmm. this is, this is them, this is me in between that is work. And mm-hmm. I, so I'm like, okay, I'm going to go down that path. And, and mostly it, it's like, yeah, so I got, I got evidence of my own, uh, beliefs working out and, mm-hmm. and over time that that's something that I'm actually huge on mm-hmm. is, is, is your self trust build so much as you keep the promises that you make to yourself. Yes. So keeping, keeping your word to yourself and it just improves your internal locus of control mm-hmm. and your, your belief. And that's where my confidence comes from. So it's just mm-hmm. a snowball, right? Yeah. Like it's years a nice ag- positive feedback. Loop. Oh my God. It's, mm-hmm. it just compounds over time. And, and I think that is where that started early on where mm-hmm. I started doing these things and I'm started to get some clients and Mm. the content that I was putting out was starting to hit with people. And it all stemmed, always came back to what do I enjoy doing? Mm -hmm. It's like really just like, what do I enjoy doing? And as that, as that went on, I, I realized like, Oh, I see what these people are doing, but Mm -hmm. the fact that they have all these calls or they have these meetings or they're managing these people and Mm -hmm. things, I'm just like, I don't enjoy that. Mm -hmm. I very much, (laughs) my, 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 (laughs) yeah, like my epitome of, of freedom and where I want my, what my business to do for me is, is like an empty calendar. Like for the Mm -hmm. most part, it's an empty calendar. I don't like having things scheduled. I want my mornings to be very slow. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and yeah, and I think that I saw these routes as these other coaches were going. But the thing is, is I also saw like, that's what you need to do. Mm-hmm. That's, that's your type of personality type and what you really enjoy doing as a coach or mm-hmm. as a business owner. It's like, I really enjoyed coaching and then creating. Like I, mm-hmm. I liked more of the, the writing aspect of things. And mm-hmm. I, I liked the content creation side of things. And so um, I, it was, it's the same philosophy that I have with fitness, which yeah. is your, your, you, I want to live the life that I want to live. And then I want to have my fitness support that. Mm-hmm. And so the same thing with business is like, I want to live the life that I want to live and then mm-hmm. have my business support me in doing that as well. And so anything that I think about adding to my business, mm-hmm. it's more so like, okay, by adding this, is this enhancing the lifestyle that I imagine in my head me having on a day-to-day basis mm-hmm. or in the future or whatever? Um, or is it is it taking away that for the sake of profit or growth? Like, I right. don't believe in growth for the sake of growth. Right. Like, I'm very fine with coasting sometimes. Mm-hmm. I'm very okay with that. I think that's very important for entrepreneurs to understand. And, like, it's something that, you know, full honesty, like, when I started building out the team, like, I didn't fully understand. I think there's a lot of... I think there's probably two big misconceptions when people start scaling, especially if they don't have someone that understands what that actually means, tell them what it means. I think a lot of people think scaling means more freedom. It does not. Mm -hmm. Because especially when you go from single to multiple, you now are responsible for more people. You do have to be on meetings. You do have to be available for this. You do have to be be available for that. It's actually, in my experience, less freedom. Mm -hmm. And that's an exchange that you have to be willing to make. I also think a lot of people think that business growth or like if somebody posts, you know, Hey, my company is a seven figure company. They assume the owner makes seven figures or that when you are scaling as an owner, that you are automatically going to make more money. Mm -hmm. I've never said this publicly before, but in having a team, I took an $80,000 a year pay pay cut. Mm. So it's like, and why did that feel right for you? Like why, why, why did that feel? Cause I can understand how like impact or duty Mm -hmm. or bigger, a, a bigger fulfilling thing felt right or you saw it as like a stepping stone to where you wanted to go yeah I think for me and this is something that I've actually gone back and forth with in my head a lot because like when I was doing that I did not know that that would happen to that extent if Mm -hmm. I'm fully honest sure but in terms of reconciling with it for one I will never forget sending the first set of paychecks to my team Mm. and how good that felt because you know it's like and I get kind of emotional like when I think about it and I talk about it because like as somebody that like built this thing and built this audience for like x amount of time it's just different when you see that actually feed somebody oh, else. I can imagine. Yeah. I, it's, it's beautiful. Continue. Thank you. Continue. <laughs> and like, that's just a very w- weird and unique feeling. Um, and I also know that there are, and like, this is how I feel about my team and the coaches that we have. There's people out there that are 
smarter than me in different areas and that having them around me not only benefits them it like gives them a job it gives them a reach that they might not have had before but it also makes me smarter yeah and it makes me better that makes sense and you know there was just like a period in time where i just got tired of doing things alone and like i couldn't grow in any way because i was just bogged down with this bogged down with that and i will say that you know for the freedom that i've exchanged the money that i've exchanged my business runs more efficiently Mm -hmm. and so and like I also fucking love the people that I work with like I literally get to just fucking right. hang out with cool people all day virtually like it's great <laughs> absolutely and so like that kind of level of payoff has been worth it that makes sense That's one thing a- you just said though uh is you're like you got to have clarity on what you want to do and I think how you want to do it too because yeah. like I definitely fell into the kind of, I don't want to call it trap because it's not inherently a bad thing I think business coaches are doing a great job especially for people that are you know starting out that maybe have smaller followings that you know are kind of fresh in business, but like I tried to follow and structure my business the way that, you know, most business coaches in the space now tell you to. And it took me a long time to realize that's not how my company needs to function. I don't need to have, I don't need to be up my team's ass with meetings every single week, Mm -hmm. all of this, that, the other thing, like, Mm -hmm. and and there might be business coaches that are like, well, maybe your company would be bigger if it did. And I'm like, at what cost? These are, at what cost? That's the question. And like, at what cost? And there comes a point, and I actually like I learned this the hard way, quote unquote, where I'm like, the increase in money is not worth the sacrifice in my life. One hundred percent. Like I'm not, I'm not fucking doing it. It's that's 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 one hundred percent it. And I think also at what cost with your 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 freedom. Mm-hmm. Um, but then uh, one of the a really good, a really good quote that I heard was, um, I didn't sign up for a marathon to take a taxi to the end right it's like with business it's like that's kind of it's like i i'm this is going to take as long as it needs to take because i know this is something that i'm going to do forever right it's the same thing with with fitness it's like at what cost of course it's important to have you can have these goals you can have these Mm -hmm. short but understand that you're going to be working on your fitness for the rest of your life Mm -hmm. with business it's just going to be there's always going to be things that are going to be on your plate it's just a conveyor belt of Mm -hmm. these problems and things it's just a conveyor belt and it just it's serving you up with these other and you're just but the thing is is the more the quick more quicker you get these things done there's still more things that just keep coming through right so why are we rushing? Mm. What is? Why well, are we rushing? Why are, why are we rushing through the, any? All this is the metaphor for everything. So mm-hmm. What are we? What are we in a rush for? I think. Well, I heard uh, somebody. It was either a poet or a writer or something. There's like a, there's a there's a sense in the air of joyless urgency. Mm. And I'm just like that's so true. It's just like mm-hmm. what like where are we? What are we rushing to this next thing for? Because. Mm-hmm as we've realized from all the other things that we've done up to this point is that Mm -hmm. there's going to be more things. Yeah. So it's like, how can we set our lives up in this way to have that macro understanding? And Mm -hmm. then you can on the day to day enjoy it's, it's the, the Mark Manson kind of like choosing your heart, like choosing your pain. It's Mm -hmm. just kind of like, of course there's going to be pain because then things would not be worth it. Yeah. Um, Like there has to be pain. This is, growth like that is that Mm -hmm. is there is that is how growth works and so um yeah i think but the more how i've always thought about business and if whenever whenever carter and i end up doing this little business venture together for other solopreneurs it's like the the main thing that i'm the main goal that i'm trying to accomplish is is as much work as i want to do on the things that i want to work on and as little of work on the things Mm -hmm. that I don't want to do. And then how can I get paid the most possible for that? Right. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's kind of like, I want to do as much as I want to do on the things that I want to do and as little Mm -hmm. on the things that I don't want to do on the things that I hate. And of course there's probably always going to be some stuff that you don't love doing. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's like, how can you, how can you mitigate that gap? And then how can I leverage the work that I do want to do in a way that makes me the most income Mm -hmm. possible without sacrificing all the other things that I value in life, yes. right? If I value uh, the, the queer, the queer schedule or, you know, Fridays off or, or right. something like that or whatever, whatever it is. And it's up to you, but I mm-hmm. think it's also, you have to check in with your own values and, mm-hmm. and what is meaningful for you. And again, this can take a lot of work because mm-hmm. for many people, business can fill a very unfillable void yes. and you can con- and that's how business can, you can constantly 
there's always more mm -hmm. that you oh, can there's do. There's always more. And it's like the Russ quote, direction is way more important than speed, but people Ooh. think way more about speed than direction. Ooh. And it's, it's actually, it's kind of full circle with what you were talking about with moving to New York. You're like, I kind of realized where my hard boundaries were and where maybe kind of some of my like softer boundaries were, where it's like, mm, I could maybe give a little bit on this in exchange for this. Mm -hmm. But it, it does really come back to a level of self-awareness and clarity on your values, the vision you have for your life and what you want versus what you're told to want yes. and versus the kind of whether they're false or true promises that are made to you. If I do things mm. X, Y, Z way. And yes. it, it, again, like that self-awareness piece is so critical and the ability to look within and, and not just know who you are and what you want, but uphold that. Yeah. And it's, 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 I think that's such a great point. And I think it's, it's not listening to the supposed tos, mm -hmm. right? Because there isn't any. There's actually, they're not real. You know you can do, there are, there, you they're can like do anything. They're like birds. You birds can, aren't real. Birds are spies. Like <laughs> You can do anything. Like this <laughs> is, I think honestly, like that's what, that's what business has helped me realize. And mm -hmm. then also moving to Austin. Yeah. Like Austin was so big for this. I'm like, oh, you mean you can just have two girlfriends if you want, <laughs> you know, like there are, like you can just, of course, not everyone wants to do that, but there's consenting adults who, who want to have multiple partners. And it's like, oh, you can do that yeah. if you want to. And if you do it the right way and, mm -hmm. and, and um, it's like, there's these, these rules and these supposed tos and these things. And I think that that is what can, can hold a lot of people back yeah. from how they, they truly feel. And whenever I, I moved to Austin, I just, I felt like I was able to express myself fully yeah. or more so I had all of these opportunities and, and, different people in my life that presented mm -hmm. these different ways of living or these different activities. And I was, uh, they basically the door was open, but I walked through it. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that that is, um, it's so, uh, it's, it's so meaningful whenever you find new things, you're like, Oh, I didn't know this was available, mm -hmm. but now it's available. Same thing with, with friendships or whatever. It's like, Oh, mm -hmm. now I know this is available. This is my new standard. Yes. And I think that, constantly reflecting back on what you actually give a fuck about and then what fills you up and, and lean. It's like, that's where I'm very okay with, you know, leaning into friendships mm -hmm. more than career. Right. It's yeah. like, if I'm supposed to, if I had a day where I'm supposed to do some work related things, but then I have a friend who I found out was in town. They're like, Hey, let's go to Barton Springs at noon. Mm -hmm. I'm like, fucking bet like mm -hmm. let's go screw that i'm not doing this content anymore like let's <laughs> let's go let's let's hang out because that is what is the highest priority to me that's what feels mm -hmm. the best to me and now of course on the other side money still needs to be made i still have to be responsible but it's like based off of my value system that is only up to me because mm -hmm. a lot of people are like oh you can't just skip out of work and go do this mm -hmm. it's like yeah, I, I can. And it actually aligns with who I am the most and how mm -hmm. I feel the best in the world. And as long as I'm still able to have that checks and balances with, mm -hmm. okay, I'm doing, I'm doing the work that I need to and, and things that sometimes that is, that is a reality. Cause with coaching, as you know, it's like with businesses, it's, it, you have to be able to ride the wave yeah. over and over and over again and, and trust in yourself. And I think this goes back to how I was talking about gaining more confidence and mm -hmm. self-trust in your abilities. It's from continually proving to yourself that you can do hard things and, yes. and get through things and ride that wave. And so now whenever I have those dips in businesses or things, it's like, mm -hmm. I'm going to figure it out Yeah, because I've always figured it out. And this is just what we do. Mm -hmm. This is, I've, I, I've talked to Carter about that. I was like, this is, I'm not concerned. It's like even dipping into an emergency fund or something mm -hmm. like that. It's like, I, I did that recently and I was just, I, it felt it, it, from an ego perspective, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, this number isn't always going up. Right. You're like, and oh, this feels a little shamey but, and but a exactly. little blah. But also it's like, dude, this is what the fucking fund is for. Yeah, you're like, this is why this, you're this, is like, what you, this is why you're doing this. You're and like, so, thank you, Pastel. Right. Like, we did need this. Thank exactly. you. Like, <laughs> exactly. It's like, this is the moment that you're needing this. But I, th and I think that, that can take some, some self-work and stuff mm -hmm. to, to push through and things. And, um, but like things are working again. Things yeah. are starting to work and you have to, but, but those it's like this is why all of your choices matter right. all of these little things they talk about like making the bed or taking the stairs or, or things it's like of course some decisions can matter more than others but it's more in the sense of oh i'm a person who does this this yeah. is what i do mm -hmm. and this is this is actually 
this is a very meta, and I know I'm somewhat on a tangent now, but now with that's what podcasts with are for. I know, right? <laughs> with, with the friendship thing within the within the group, like mm-hmm. the the golden retriever ness, my mm-hmm. golden retriever energy, or like the 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 kind of the I hate to say like good guy or nice guy because that can come with like for me it can be like kind of naivete as well, yeah. like oh he's 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 nice to just anybody and doesn't right. have he can get walked all over. Um, that's not how I feel, but my fe- my my place was in within the group of where I am naturally optimistic, and mm-hmm. I I really do love people, um, and I get so much out of connecting mm-hmm. with uh, with those people. It's like that has kept me accountable mm-hmm. to being that I'm already naturally that person, but whenever you have the the kind of expectation mm-hmm. within the group to mm-hmm. be this optimistic fr- very kind person it's not that i feel pressured to always show up in like the the my my most joyous self or anything like that it's not that it's more so just like oh you don't you this is you you have to uphold that because it's also who you are mm-hmm. and so again making sure that you guys hold me accountable to being my best self mm-hmm. i'm like oh this is this is my role yeah. within this. It's not living only, by your standards. Yes. Within to myself and then also within the community. And so if everybody has that internal checks and balances or mm-hmm. has that um, accountability within other people in the group, it's like mm-hmm. one of the things we say whenever you come in the group, it's like, show us your tricks. Like <laughs> show new, us your tricks. A new person comes into the group, like, show us your tricks. What like, you what, do you, what, what do you, you, what do you have to share with us? Um, and again, that's not from a place of like judgment or mm-hmm. whatever, but it's like people can have, and, and obviously there's so much overlap within mm-hmm. personalities and things, but it's like, there can be different roles that mm-hmm. people can have, have within the, mm-hmm. within the group. And so I think that that's, um, yeah, starting, starting with yourself and, and mm-hmm. making sure that you understand what your values are and then trying to, as much as possible, match your actions with your ambitions mm-hmm. um, and, and also being willing to change and evolve and accept that. Um, yeah, it can be very meaningful. Mm-hmm. It can be very worthwhile. It's almost like your relationship to self, your friends, your partner, your career are kind of all it's intertwined. A, it's weird, it's, isn't it? It's all of it. It's weird. R- it really is all of it. But it's... We can get so caught up in these little, the little games, the mm-hmm. little game of getting like moving this next checker or this next checker piece whenever it's actually it's chess and all mm-hmm. these things are, are intertwined. And um, yeah, I think having, having these conversations and, and being with friends and things can snap you out of that normal pattern mm-hmm. of things. It can be a nice pattern interrupt and you can see things more clearly whenever we're sitting on the beach at 3 a.m. at Cabo or something. And God, like, that was iconic. We're just vibing and like, that this was is like, this is it. Like, well, th- you know what? This is why we do the thing. This is, dude, I, uh, that's exactly, I was talking, uh, it was, uh, I believe it was Carter and Trent. So it was a couple of our friends and, and I was like, I, I, we were just like, this is crazy. We were, we were, it was Cabo, Mexico. It was this beautiful event, celebrating our friends, getting married and all these incredible people around us. And I don't know if it was me or somebody else, but we just kept saying, we're like, we deserve this. Mm -hmm. Like we deserve this. And that can, that's something that, especially people who have big goals or they, they like to achieve Mm -hmm. things. It can be, it can be hard to not always stop and smell the roses. Yes. But like in those moments, I was like this, these are the moments and we need to soak this in. Yes, where it's like, as much as this is. (laughs) <laughs> this is the th- yeah seriously and it's like this we we deserve this but mm-hmm. the thing is, is like we do deserve that mm-hmm. and it's only because of the the, the work that mm-hmm. we've done and the the care and intention and love that goes behind mm-hmm. what we do and i think it's just like we know i joke i joke on my on my on my instagram on my pin post about me mm-hmm. it's like i I just want everyone to enjoy life as much as I do. I think that's and, a great and, and, aspiration. And my vehicle for change, for making that happen, is through fitness. Same. In, in this moment. Yeah. Right? It's yeah. just like, I'm, I, I like what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Here's some things that I'm doing that you might also very much enjoy. And it right. might make your life really great, too. Absolutely. And I think, you know, kind of as we wrap this up, it bring bringing like a... Because like you said multiple times, you're like, I know it's really easy for this to sound like narcissistic right. or like suck up or whatever. I think one of the biggest things that I've always tried to do for people, you know, through like how I live my life or like the things that I talk about, it's to show people that this exact thing mm-hmm. is possible for you. Yes. 
it's just a certain level of steps and things that you do to get there. But it really is one of those things, like kind of how you were talking about when you moved to Austin. You're like, I could have two girlfriends if I want. It's right. just a, the framework that I got to do <laughs> right. to do that. Right. Anything. Yeah. Just about mm-hmm. anything. Yeah is possible for anyone. Yes. And once you actually see that in front of your face, Mm -hmm. especially like, you know, like you're saying, like in Austin or like in New York or whatever it is, once you see that in front of your face, you're like, well, fuck, I actually can't play small anymore. I have no excuses if I don't do this thing that is solely on me. But every single thing that we've talked about, fulfilling relationships, fulfilling platonic relationships, fulfilling Mm -hmm. career, feeling fulfilled within yourself, all of those things are possible for literally anyone listening to this. It's just a matter of figuring out the things that need the work mm-hmm. and devoting to those consistently and perfectly over time. That's it. It's, it is, it is available and it is, um, it is worth the work. Uh, and I think that that it can feel, it can feel daunting and mm-hmm. it can feel like maybe you have so much that you, you want to, you want to fix and things, but it's also like, we still feel that way too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like it ju- it we even though we can say all these things about how great we feel and I'm very mm-hmm. very fulfilled in many of these other things, mm-hmm. but there's still plenty of shit that I'm that I go through yeah. and it it comes and goes, but it's like I would much rather tackle that shit with all of my friends supporting me as well than Facts. trying to do it by myself. And so yeah, I think it's uh that's that's the message is, is do the work within yourself and then also you'll you'll it'll be a funny thing that happens as a result of that whenever the rest of your life mm-hmm. it seems kind of like weird magic when you're like hmm. yeah you should also get witch friends you should also get all right matt this has been fantastic it has you're been. one of my favorite people to talk to Aww. i'm so glad you're here thank you you're, welcome. you're one of my favorite people in general gotta, oh yes. fine we fucking make, one up we gotta wait wait hold on Is no like you, pointer fingers oh like pointer this? fingers and middle fingers oh 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 yep. like this there we go see oh so nice. Cute. So nice. <laughs> All right. One this question I ask of everybody that okay. is based on the name of the show. What's one thing you're working on embodying in your life right now? Um, sh- probably on the – it's on the romantic side of things. Love that. Making sure that um, I am staying true to myself and also not bullshitting myself because I can – it's it's the – it really is the – I can I can get into the perfectionist mindset also with with romantic relationships, mm. um, but but yeah I think making sure that I I show up in that capacity um, in the way that I want to um, and I think there's still a lot of growth that can be had within that avenue and mm-hmm. finding a partner and I'm very excited about that. I love that. I'm confident about it. It's I it's gonna take it's gonna take as long as it needs to take and there's no rush. Again, this with all this, the wave. there's no rush. It's it's riding the wave because if I if I do ru- it's like if I do rush, it's not gonna get me any closer to the truth that I want to get closer to. Right? It's going to take as long as it needs to take, and I'm just I'm I'm believing myself, and I'm believing in the universe to provide. I love it. Look at you. Look at us. Becoming witchy. Look at us. I, a little warlock. I've been, a warlock I've over been, here. I, the moon girls have slowly but surely been converting me. It's been, We yeah, know some stuff. It's really, it's really, it can be very weird. Um, <laughs> but it's <laughs> gone, well, it's gone well so far. So I'm, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to keep leaning into it. Just wait till we get to the blood rituals. That'll be a good time. I'm ready. Give me, uh, give me the goblet. Fantastic. <laughs> little chalice. I'm ready. All right, I'm Matt. Ready. This is your chance. Perfect. Plug away. Where can people find you? Where can they Plug follow away. you? Where can they listen to what you have to say? Where can they work with you? Perfect. All the good things. Perfect. Perfect. Um, go to my Instagram. It's at Matt McLeod 6. So M-A-T-T-M-C-L-E-O-D 6. Um, my link within there can have everything else, but my website's also mattmcleod.org. Um, you can find some articles and things on there, but those are the two two main places. Also my email list, but you can find both of those, th- or you can find that through my site my instagram follow me on instagram mostly so that we can be friends and get into some shenanigans together 